Do you think it's possible to pole dance while drunk? While drunk? Yeah. Is I don't think it's, I don't, it's possible. Is it safe? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not safe? No, Naomi. <laughs> No. I was just wondering. Was that's just hilarious, wondering. though. But that's probably <laughs> the most original question I've ever gotten. Uh, yeah, I think it's possible. I think it's done. I think people do it all the time, and they, I think oh, they really? regret it yeah, in the morning. I'm looking to like exercise, and um, I don't find it enjoyable. So, like, how can we make this better? <laughs> oh. You know what? I des I despise exercise. S factor. I wouldn't even put S factor and exercise necessarily in the same concept, um, because S is all about decadent, yummy, pleasure-filled, sensual sexiness. Mm -hmm. And you don't need a pole to do S. You can do a pole. I can do. I can give you a pole class. I mean, an S class right there. And, yeah, oh, wow. you would just melt into a big old puddle of yourself and go. Oh, it feels so good and yummy and you'd be moving your body in ways that you can't even imagine and wow. you would be working your body out but you wouldn't know it and that's the trick mm, yes yes i like that trick i like that yeah. trick. all right now i guess we have to get serious <laughs> all right so everybody welcome to beauty cocktails and girl talk today we're here with sheila kelly and uh yeah i'm gonna start us off with one of our signature questions what is one beauty product that you cannot live without oh what you didn't prepare me for some of these. Okay, well, there's so many. Um, I cannot live without my face sprays from Body Jelly. And Body Jelly is this all organic, um, like skincare place out in Palm Desert of all places. There's only two locations in the world, but you can have them ship. I have them ship everywhere I go. And they have these sprays and they have essential oil in mineral water. That's that you spray it and the smell is so beautiful. I'm looking to see if I have one right here, but it's in the other room. And you just it 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 glistens and then the oils saturate your skin, but it's not oily because it's just a mist of watery kind of a little oil. That's my favorite. And my favorite smell is the chamomile. Ooh, yeah. You got me worried when you said body deli. I was like, I'm just like, you know, pastrami scented. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> But chamomile, that's better, yeah. That's good. That, that was a good one. Pastrami, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> Potato salad, macaroni and cheese. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Your skin is so flawless, though. So, like, you like, can tell you take very good care of it. I'm a, I am a little bit of a health fanatic. I don't like using that word though. I guess why I was a little he hesitant. I just love feeling good. And I have felt not so good in my life. Most recently I had COVID. Um, it is not something, all the hype that you're hearing is not hype. It's for real scary. But uh, so I'm like a water drinker. I drink tons of water. I do the body jelly. I use SkinCeuticals. I just started using SkinCeuticals. I don't know if you guys have ever used that. They have got some really great products. It sounds great. I've never heard of them. I'll have to look them up. They do like, like natural peels. Right? Yeah, 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 and and they're like kind of pharmaceutical, but they're not. And that's therefore skinceutical. But I think it's marketing. So I saw somebody's movie called the Del the Diner. The Diner. You saw the oh, you saw it. <laughs> I saw a scene. I saw. Oh. A well, thank you for watching it. Yeah, you were wonderful. What a lovely actress you are. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Um, so Sheila, I have to ask you if yeah. you could quarantine with anyone during this time, living or dead, who would it be? And what would you drink? Doesn't have to be alcohol. And what would you guys do? Whoa. Well, there's this really hot actor on The Good Doctor named Richard Schiff, who plays Aaron Glassman. And that's who I would quarantine with. And Hell we, yeah. Well, because I am quarantined with him because he's my husband. Oh, well, um, yeah. <laughs> and we would drink tons of uh, kombucha and green juices. And we would swim in the warm water in the freezing cold rainy air. And we would like, you know, hang out in front of the fireplace naked and massage each other with oils from the body jelly. I love it. I feel like you just like, you knew, you knew it already. You're like, I, I know, I know what I would be doing. I know who I'd be doing it with. 
Yeah. What about you? Oh my gosh. I don't know. Now, usually nobody asks me that. Yeah. So like, I, <laughs> I had to think about it. Maybe somebody like, I love Priyanka Chopra. Like she's one of my favorite, you know, role models. Yeah. So I feel like she'd be super fun to hang out with or Oprah. And you know, oh. just like conversations. You mean non-sexy people. You mean just normal people. <laughs> or maybe they are, I don't know. <laughs> they could be sexy. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, maybe Oprah would be cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Oprah would be awesome. Oh, Oprah would be very cool. I don't know Priyanka Chopra very well. She's married to Nick Jonas. Ah, oh, he'd be he'd be fun. Mm, yeah, oh, yes. he would be fun. He's a beauty. I wonder if he can pole dance. <laughs> yeah, so there's a way to find out. <laughs> it's called DM me. DM me. <laughs> True. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have our next question. Uh, what would your idea of an epic girls' night be? Oh my God, an epic girls night would be to get a bunch of S factor women who have great positive energy together in a big ballroom at like the Waldorf Astoria. Does that exist even? Or the Plaza Hotel Yeah. and put red lights everywhere and have silver poles everywhere and this incredible sound system and just like dance in my erotic energy with my seven inch heels and my sexy clothes and just throw some hair around and, and just feel really decadently yummy and delicious. That's my idea. Like I could do two hours of that and just be in bliss, roll around on the floor. Nice. Undulate a little bit to Lil Wayne. I don't know. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I need a cup of that energy that you're bringing like every day when I wake up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's it's so it. good. It's so good. It's that, it's that whole thing that I love so much about embodiment, you know, it took me yeah. a long time to get here, but now that I'm here, I just can't, I can't leave it. I can't leave it. I can't forget about it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Well, we want to hear your story because we're nosy and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we would like to know. We are. That's we're always like, tell us more. So, like, what inspired you to become a pole dancing instructor and start your own company? Like, what was the specific moment in your life that you knew that this was part of your purpose? Hmm. That's a good question. I was doing a film called Dancing at the Blue Iguana. I played a character named Stormy. Mm -hmm. I'd also produced the film and I had written the original script. Um, and we decided to throw the script out and do an improvisational film. So the act, you know, me and the other actresses, we went into the city of Los Angeles and we found ourselves pole dance stripper instructors and, um, and learned how to do this movement. And I had been a dancer my whole life. I was a dance major at NYU. I had studied anatomy and somatics and trauma and all this stuff. And, uh, I had never in my life moved my body the way that I moved my body when I was doing this film. I mean, really overt, big, round, sensual, just crazy, sexy movement. And I had a kid and I had been before the movie, just kind of like frumpy mom. I was in my frumpy mom mode, 30 years old, taking my kid into carpool, just hair always up, feeling like crap. And I did this film for six months and the transformation was like jaw dropping. Like I was like coming into carpool with my hair on fire and my makeup on and my body like looked really great because I've got muscles where I never had muscles before. And I just walked with a different walk and I moved with a different feeling and my marriage got better. Everything got better. And then the moms, one day I was pulling into carpool at this little preschool and there's a knock at my driver's side window. I rolled down the window. This is why, yes, I had a roll down window. And I don't know, y'all remember that? Are you too young for that? Okay. <laughs> I'm dating myself with the roll down window. Um, and it was one of the moms who was a ballerina and she had her hair back really, really tight and her face was very stern and she was very rigid. And she said, what are you doing? Because you look completely different and like you're so much happier. Happier. And I said, well, if you come to my house and bring some seven inch heels, I'll show you. 
because I had put a poll up in my, my husband's office. So she came with a couple girlfriends and I gave her a class where I morphed together um, sensual like movement I had learned uh, at the clubs and ballet and Kundalini yoga and some Pilates that I'd moved all, morphed all this together into the technique that is now known as the epic S factor journey. And exactly the same thing that happened to me happened to them. Their lives changed dramatically. Their marriages got better. Their relationships with their girlfriends got better. And it just, that was the moment I knew. And I said, oh, wow, this is huge. And this was, mind you, again, I'm dating myself way before pole fitness was anything. There'd never been anything like this. It's 1999, 2000. And uh, it was, it just took off like wildfire. And then Oprah called two years later and said, hey, I'm doing this. Can you be a sexpert on my show? Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, yeah, what's a sexpert? Um, <laughs> me, apparently. And uh, I went on the show and then she had me back again. And then Terry Hatcher went on with S Factor. And, and so it was just it was just permeating the, you know, the psyche of the globe. Mm-hmm. And from that moment, like strip tease classes and pole dance classes. And I mean, it was the genesis of, of this beautiful phenomenon of feminine, feminine movement. And who would have thought that you had to introduce feminine movement into the world? Because I didn't even realize all my life I had been moving like a guy. I'd, <laughs> I'd been, you know, trying to run faster than the guys and trying to throw harder than the guys and trying to hit. And I realized, wow, I had been trying to fit my more feminine nature and my more feminine body into this very linear muscular way of moving um so it was a truly massive light bulb moment for me and then every woman i taught and it just it just continued to grow wow i could listen to your story like all like i'd be like listening for hours because it's so intriguing and it's so you know, like confident, finding that inner confidence within yourself and getting in touch with that divine feminine energy. So to touch on that a little bit more, you know, you've had some amazing clients who you've helped like Kate Hudson, Eva Longoria, Deborah Messing, and, you know, just women every day. So is there a common theme that you notice when they come to you Mm -hmm. that they're maybe feeling that they're lacking within themselves and then how they evolve from it afterwards? Huh? You know, that you ask that, I, I think, and this is so funny uh, that, that you would think this of all of those names you just said, but there's a lack of ease and confidence in their body. Yeah. A lack of trust, a lack of trusting their natural feminine movement. Everything um, I think of the women that you mentioned and, and just everybody that, you know, come on, you guys, we live in a world that knocks women right out of the confidence of their body. We're judged from the second we come out. Oh my God, your hair's this, your face is that, your legs are this, your this is that. It's like, it's nonstop. And I'm telling you, it has come at me all my life. It's come at every woman I've ever known. So we just... When you're getting those little microaggressions, those little uh, attacks constantly, it, it really eats away at the ego of your body, like their psychic ego. And then you start to just like the muscles. I, I study how the muscles form the body and the shape of the body. So what happens is that the muscles begin to just without your consciousness, like unconsciously, you just start tensing up parts of your body and you become rigid. Like your body, your, your fascia gets stuck, your muscles get stuck and you can't breathe as well as you used to be able to breathe when you were a baby. Like you're literally breathing just in this part of your body. And so we're just squeezing women out of our bodies. And S factor was about, you know, pushing women back into the gloriousness of your, of our bodies. Yeah. Yeah, That's, that's actually what I meant about like when they come out of it, because it seems like there's this empowered place that you come to with connecting with your body. And I think sometimes, like you said, we're not like consciously aware of those things and then go like aligning the mind, body, and the spirit. And then just feeling that like, you know, feminine energy and owning it. It's like, awesome. I, I would love to be in that place that you're talking about. Sounds like euphoric. It is, you know what, you nailed it. You just nailed it. What you said was beautiful. It's a, it's exactly that. They come in, you know, seemingly confident with the idea that I'm tough, I'm strong, I'm a strong woman, 
but yet you say, here, do this hip circle. And it's like, ar, ar. it's like the Tin Man. Ar, ar, ar. <laughs> Nothing moves. And then it had happened to me too. I was like the Tin Woman. I couldn't get it. And I was like, are you kidding? Am I supposed to be able to? And I was a dance major at NYU. I was supposed to be able to move fluidly and, 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 se and sexy, but you do. No. And so when you come out on the other side of this journey, even if you take one or two classes, you come out with a different sense of kind of a righteousness, like not a, not an angry righteousness, but like a, oh my God, I'm supposed to be this hot. <laughs> I'm, I'm supposed to, you know, be this sensual. I'm supposed to have all these curves and swerves and I'm, I'm supposed to carry my body through the world like this all lit up and on fire. I've been dousing my flame for years and that's the aha moment. And you're right. It is. It's like Nirvana. It's like living in a state of Nirvana. Every breath you take feels like full of ecstasy. Every movement you make, even the way I touch my hair, I'm consciously embodied. And that's all, it's, this starts with that. Just starts with that, like right now where you guys are, right where you are, just consciously embody. Just, just wiggle your toes. And now just, just think about your lower back. Arch your lower back a little bit. And now pull a Kegel. Yeah, 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 okay. Maybe that will get you. And now just like, and just rock from one hip to the other. Just rock from one hip to the other. But now try and find pleasure. Now stretch when you move it. Stretch the hip. And just stretch the hip. That's, That's tight. All. <laughs> it's tight, but you know what? This is the beginning. This is just the beginning of conscious awareness of how much pleasure can I find in my body? It's really that. It's a pleasure hunt. You're hunting, touching, just touching, just touching your chin and your neck, just your neck, just touching, just feeling the concaves and the and the, all the beautiful curves and the and the texture and the lines. It's so simple, you guys. People have made women so scared of our bodies that just to touch ourselves or just run your hand, just put your hand like through your hair, and just squeeze your scalp. But don't just do it, do it and enjoy it and say, God damn it, I'm gonna enjoy it. And I don't care if anyone sees me enjoying this. And now pull it up and just stretch into it. Yeah, and then let it fall in your face a little bit, you know, and just get messy in your body, get messy in your pleasure. It's really so bad when you, when you get that, it just gets so right. Now, arch, now just arch your back, arch. And just stretch the front of your body, drop your head back. Inhale, 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 and then come round forward slowly. Oh, hi. <laughs> and you get lost in your body. And then you begin to understand why those who are attracted sexually to you are so attracted to you because you're so gorgeous. And I just witnessed that in all three of you. Oh, I want to take your class. I like literally want to like. Yeah. I want to take this class now. Will you so come fun. out, Trudy? We gotta do it. Yeah. Although yeah. I have never been able to walk in heels. So you guys, so you're, guess what? You're gonna have to do it online with us because COVID has made us close all our studios. And what mm -hmm. we've done, which is beautiful, is we are actually pivoting and now offering classes and workshops online. So I have a class, I have a workshop starting um, next Monday for eight weeks, at oh, Woman wow. Ignited. Oh, hell yes. Woman <laughs> Ignited. And if you wanna take it, let me know. And then, um, and then you remember that, did you see the documentary? I saw parts of it, I haven't finished it yet. I'm going to finish it tonight. It's so profound. It's I'm so beautiful. Like the beginning, the opening, everything. You just know, like, you're like, oh, I want to take this journey with these ladies. Beautiful. So I'm going to do that journey. Um, that's what I'm going to do in the latter half of the year. I'm going to do the six month journey I did for the documentary virtually. So anyone in the world can take this journey. It's going to not be with pole. It's just with the movement. It's just with the sensuality. It's just with understanding who you are as an erotic being. Mm. Who are you? How does your body want to be kissed and touched and mm. loved? And that's what you find out and you get really an incredible clear sense of it. And then, and then you know who to look for and how to be in love. Mm. Yeah. That's the energy we're bringing into 2021. <laughs> how we better. <laughs> ah, so fun. Victoria. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. All right. So yeah, speaking of your Netflix documentary, uh, Strip Down, Rise Up, congrats on that. Um, tell us about how that opportunity came to you. What uh, was a documentary something you always wanted to do? No. No. <laughs> S Factor was my personal little secret fight club for women for, mm. years, for 20 years. And it is, it feels a lot like that movie, only instead of beating the shit out of each other, we elevate and support and celebrate each other. And, you know, we strap on our heels and we put on the sexiest clothes that make our body feel sexy. And some women, by the way, don't like the heels. Some women are like, I hate the heels. They don't make me feel sexy. And I don't know if that's you, Naomi. Um, <laughs> well, I think it's a more of a balance issue. But... <laughs> oh, that's good then. Because sometimes, most of the time, you don't need to be on your feet. You just need to be yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, you know, it's, um, it's been this private, beautiful secret world and so michelle ohan who's the filmmaker she's a academy award nominated filmmaker she called out of the blue and my marketing department put me uh her in touch with me and she and i got on the phone for two hours and we could not stop talking and she said look i'm interested in making a film about pole dancing and sensual movement and empowering women through it and i've talked to so many people and all roads lead back to you and will you be in this film? And I had already kind of been um, approached by quite a few people in the reality TV show world. And this is not a reality TV show product. This is much, much, much sexier, much deeper, much more feminine empowering. So um, I eventually said yes to her and we started shooting in uh, 2017, 2018. And so we shot it like three years ago and we put together a couple classes and she came into the classes once a month and it was a six month journey that she followed. And um, the women in the film are, oh my God, they're incredible. They're so diverse, so beautiful, so loving. You've just got every different beautiful, diverse kind of woman, age of woman, race of woman and, and, and se uh, sexual persuasions. And it's, it's just, it was just a really beautiful coming together. And then the love that happened in these groups and these classes is, it was incredible. And it was also terrifying because sharing and showing a, such a private part of my life is scary. Now the whole world knows what S is. They had heard about it through Oprah, but you know, no one had really been into, in, you know, in the classes. And when you get in those classes, you know, the lights are low, there's no mirrors. It's not about how you look. It's about how you feel. It's about deep embodiment. It's about self-discovery of who you are as an erotic creature. Are you light? Are you dark? Are you, are you a joyful playmate or a, da a dangerous challenger? Are you a naughty provocateur or a blissful pleaser? There's 10 different iconic body shapes in the erotic world and you'll find that you are very close to one of them and once you know who you are as mm. a erotic creature everything else is piece of cake wow wow yeah i like cake <laughs> i like cake i like pie better mm. <laughs> I like all the desserts <laughs> how you guys all so, know um, oh i'm sorry can i just, can I ask you a question yeah, go ahead. How do, you, how do you three know each other? Um, well, uh, a series of unfortunate events, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We call we call it we call it divine intervention because <laughs> what happened? Three of the most unlikely people. <laughs> um, I hired Victoria on a project, and then Victoria had a friend who needed help on a project, so she bought me. I was not in a great mood. And then we met Shruti. <laughs> what? <laughs> and it does, yeah, yeah, yeah. And at first we were very skeptical of Shruti. We were like, who's this? Hey. And then, and then we were like, oh, we like Shruti. She's cool. <laughs> wow. What was it? What was it that made you like Shruti? She, well, cause she's so, we initially met her around like a ton of other people. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't have that like individual, like, uh, 
one-on-one -on -one, but when you do have a one-on-one -on -one with her she's just like the most incredibly genuine uh giving loving caring person I've ever met in my entire life oh like, I think she'll just hit you out of the blue and you'll be like oh my feels she's so <laughs> nice and then sometimes I'm like is she real I'm like <laughs> What? And then she'll be being nice to people that were not nice to us. And I'm like, Shruti! And she's like, oh, you have to be nice and put positive energy into the world. And I'm like, oh I'd rather yell. But, you know, she yeah. just she just brings that light with her wherever uh -huh. she goes. You're oh, just I like, love you, oh, okay. <laughs> They do, too. Like, I've never, I don't think I've ever, like, worked in a company, like, paperwork-wise with anybody. Like, we just have such a, like, trust and they are just such good human beings like they're very caring they think about others they just are very genuine I love that about Naomi and Victoria they're very honest and sincere so like if you ask them something they're going to tell you the truth even if it's something you don't want to hear because they care about you they have your best interest wow. at heart wow how long have you known each other it feels like forever but it hasn't been that long has it three years like four years for no I think it's long four May four or five four for you yeah. wow and then how do you two know each other other than I working? was working a low budget project and I was trolling Craigslist for people I could not pay um, <laughs> to come and work for 18 <laughs> hours a day on a set. And uh, Victoria answered on Craigslist and I honestly thought she was going to be a creep. I went to go meet her at a Starbucks. I was like scoping it out. Stop <laughs> it. She's not a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> she was stalking me on Facebook. She's like, is this person going to murder me if I show up? Oh my God, are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, amazing. we're from New York, and yeah. New York, the Craigslist killer was a thing. Yeah. Oh, no, I did not do that. We were all like, <sighs> yep, you know, but it it worked out. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. And you guys are in LA. Yeah, yeah. Well, we were in New York. We're from New York. We just moved here during COVID, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for some more space and sunshine and a change. How's we need a change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How's that going? How's that going being in LA? It's going okay. It's going okay. Uh, a lot of things aren't fully open yet, but you know, some things are, mm -hmm. but a lot of the meetings that we came for are Zoom now. So <laughs> yeah, I was like, at least we have the sunshine, you know. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> it's so funny. You can be anywhere in the world now and still be a part of this industry. Yeah. 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 It not be that like, before COVID, they made uh, us for a pitch. We had to fly out like three days before Christmas. Remember, they were like, you have to get to LA now for this pitch. And yeah. like, oh, we could yeah. have done that on Zoom, but that wasn't even a thought in their in their head at the time. Mm -hmm. It was just like, you got to yeah. be in the room. Yeah. <laughs> no, man, all my auditions, everything, my meeting, everything is in Zoom. I haven't done anything in person, but I go to a doctor. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Do you like it? Like, how do you like it with those? I uh, love it beyond words. I love it. I love it. Oh, God, I hope it doesn't go back to what it was because <laughs> this so. is amazing. Yeah. Um, look at it. Look at it. You guys are together in, in LA. You're in LA. I'm in Van Friggin Cooper and we're having an intimate conversation about something yeah. that all of us. And I see you and I feel your souls and I feel you. And I, and it's, it's like how it can't get much better than this. And I've been teaching S factor yeah. online and it's amazing. Mm. It's amazing. Yeah. It is the connections that you make with people. I feel like I've connected honestly more with people during this time on like even a deeper level through Zoom, like you, like yourself. And it's just like, I feel like I've known this person forever and I'm not even meeting them in person. It's not about always like, oh, what's in the physical, you know? It's people so that would only be able to talk to you for like 15 minutes now that they have, they're in one spot for all their meetings they have the time to actually get to know people it's, it's great. yeah and you know you're absolutely right and you're like we're really looking at each other and people mm -hmm. I don't think people really I mean everyone I know is having some kind of deep life transformation like a mm -hmm. deep on the soul deep in you know in the yeah because this is this is unprecedented right we've been basically house arrest for mm -hmm. a, year, a year and four months yeah definitely and like, you got to look at yourself at that point and go, what have I been doing with my life? Mm -hmm. Yes. I think we've been pushed out of our comfort zones. And I always say that I'm like this, if this hadn't happened, I don't think people would be doing the internal work because right now it's like you're forced to, but that's how you transform. And then coming out of this, I feel like it's going to shift things for people in their external world. Yeah. A hundred percent. And then coming out of this, I'm kind of querying that, that, that I've been saying the same phrase and I'm 
wondering if that's really where, if, are we coming out of this or are we going somewhere else? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Ooh, that's well, a nice way to think about are we it. Going somewhere we've never been. And that's, that's what I hope. I hope we're not coming to, you know, out of it to go back to where we were. Cause man, that wasn't so great either. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I should get to the next question. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> So we got lost in a moment. That was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, right. There's a, there's a, something I got to do. <laughs> <laughs> so you play Debbie Wexler on The Good Doctor. I do. Um, so was that role an audition or an offer? Uh, and uh, tell us about how you booked it and who was mm -hmm. the first person you told when you got it? Okay. So number one, it was an offer mm. and I'm doing another TV show that was also an offer. So I haven't really auditioned for a long time. It's, um, not, a bad thing. it's not a bad thing. It's pretty, it's amazing. It's amazing because, uh, and I have to chalk it up to my S factor practice mm. to embodiment, to full ownership and confidence of embodiment and giving off that, energy that comes only from really truly moving pheromones through your body, moving energy through your body, which we did a little bit of. So that's what I chalk it up to. But I also think there's a little tiny bit of I'm sleeping with the lead actor. Kind <laughs> of. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> he just, he was just walking behind me a minute ago. That's so cute. Um, so a little bit of that. Um, but other than that, no, it's, it's just been incredible. I mean, honestly, you guys, I feel like I've stumbled into this magical potion world of move. This embodiment thing has changed my whole being, my whole everything. Mm. And it's a feminine, it's a feminine philosophy as opposed to what people, I, I often hear people talk about like, oh, meditation changed my life. You know, I sit there and I think for, you know, I go going to meditate for 20, 30 minutes a day. And I think that would drive me crazy. I'd want to shoot myself. But because the, we as the feminine are constantly in movement. We're constantly changing. We're constantly, if you have an identify with more of a feminine essence and a feminine energy than, than a masculine essence, it's harder for the, us to just sit there like this. And it's it's so much easier for us to, move in pleasure and movement, right? And when you're filling your body up like that, it changes the energy in the room. It changes the energy that you give off. And that's all I can, I can't imagine what else because there's nothing else I'm doing differently. In my 30 year career as an actress, there's nothing I'm doing differently. I'm not auditioning and I'm working more at my age than I've ever worked before. Wow. Well, so the energy too, it's like a certain frequency. Yeah vibrating at with your feminine energy and doing this spot like you know the pole dancing and just being in touch with your body and just in touch with yourself as a woman and as a yeah. feminine being it's all connected. it is all connected it, i think it is because i mean I've, I've racked my brain and gone well why would i be getting offers all the time and this and that and and it's just been uh it's been a kind of a revelation of you know the only thing i've done differently is is this mm. this movement is new yeah. To when all this work started happening. Mm -hmm. And I love playing the part. Um, I'm not so sure how long they're keeping her on, but I get to do um, the next episode, which is fun. So shooting next week. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Huh? I said they're taking all the, you know, COVID measures and they're being safe and everything on set. Yeah. Well, like I said, I'm doing two shows. The other show is a Disney Plus show called Turner and Hooch. And that show just 10 days ago shut down for 10 days because uh nine of the crew tested positive wow yeah. yikes yeah and apparently this brazilian this brazilian strain is really dangerous you heard oh this oh god i didn't even know there was a brazilian no. strain no oh my god no. why um, and, and the brazilian strain is not re is not responding to the vaccine of course not Oh, God. <laughs> no. Why would it? Why would it? Why would it? That would be too easy. <laughs> Why would it get easier? Ah. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, God. Wow. Mm. Oh. 
So Sheila, um, this is a girl talk section and this is whatever you feel comfortable talking about. I know you're very like open. So we want to hear your story on this. When it comes to a challenge in your life that you've overcome, share an experience with us and what you learned from that experience mm-hmm. about yourself. Yeah. Gosh, there's so many. They never stop coming, do they? <laughs> I don't know. Um, there's so many. There's personal challenges. There's intimate challenges. There's relationship challenges. You know, um, I would say that body, I think body dysmorphic challenges was big for mm-hmm. me. So I was a, I was pretty, I was pretty, I was a pretty harsh person inside this body for a while and probably why I'm such a vocal advocate for body love and and body acceptance and body positivity because uh, I was brutal so I think that challenge was and by the way still can be a challenge I don't think that body dysmorphia goes away necessarily yeah at least hasn't for me I don't know but if you guys have ever experienced it Mm -hmm. yeah of course Mm -hmm. I think everybody does uh, to a certain degree and I think sometimes it's challenging to talk about because you feel like oh like am I being crazy does this person relate or you compare yourself we're always in that mode especially on Instagram it's like oh this person has a perfect tan they have the perfect curves like I don't have that you know you just oh my god so Mm -hmm. why do we do that (laughs) (laughs) exactly Exactly. Yeah. And then, you you know, I think that overcoming that has been one of the greatest joys of my life mm-hmm. or, or continuing to overcome that. Yeah, I'm going to have, I, I mean, in my, I don't, in my experience, I would, I would say it's, I, I hear that, you know, alcoholism is a disease that you have all your life. I would say the same thing about body dysmorphia mm-hmm. and a body abuse. And unless yeah. you're constantly, you know, changing the story in your head, changing the neuron makeup in your brain, changing the behavior of how you treat yourself, uh, it that unless that's a constantly happening, I think that uh, you can slip back into those old patterns. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Rewiring the mindset too. Where it starts. hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. Um, what is a, we lost it on me. Hang on, I'm starting over. What is, a mantra, what is a mantra that you live by daily? Mm. Well, I have a quote that I read about, I think it was right around the time that I was doing the film, Dancing at the Blue Iguana, right? As I was finding this beautiful movement. And the quote was, um, oh, it was from David Copperfield, the opening of that book. And it goes something like, whether I turn out to be the hero of my own life or whether that station will be occupied by another, these pages must show. Mm. That's really, that's deep. Yeah. It changed my whole life. It made me produce the film. Wow. It, it said, you know what? I'm not going to wait around for a, a director to cast me. I'm not going to wait around for the next TV show, the next movie, the next role. I felt so disempowered by being a young actress who had to basically beg for every friggin' role you get. Um, that mm. that changed everything. That's why I produced Dancing of the Blue Iguana. That's why I produced it. That's why I wrote it. That's what moved me forward. And from that moment forward, I have been the motor and the activator of every single thing in my life. I have not waited. And so when you ask me about the roles and did I audition and are they offers only? It's part of that motor of like, not wanting to ask someone to cast me anymore. I want to, mm-hmm. you want, you want to cast me, you cast me. You, I have 30 years of work. You want to see what I can do? Take a look at some of my work. Um, so yeah, that, that means a lot to me, that, that quote. Mm-hmm. Love it. Victoria, do you have one? Me? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> don't freak out, don't freak out, don't freak out. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> I don't 
think so. What? All right, you have an assignment. I'm giving you an assignment. <laughs> okay. I'm giving you, your assignment is to find a quote that is going to be your guiding North Star. All right. Mm -hmm. no, I've been thinking a lot of like live in the moment because mm -hmm. I find that I um, worry about like what's going to happen or what has. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, eh, you know, I don't really have time for that anymore. Good for you. <laughs> like, take it day by day. Good I'm for like, you. I like that. That's a good yeah. one. That's like so, so it's simple, but like it's so meaningful because mm -hmm. that is all we have is a present moment. Yeah. Trudy, what's going on with your eyes? I have the worst allergies. I've taken like Claritin. I've drank tea. I've done steam today. I'm like, oh, I just want this. It's the springtime here in New York. I'm so bad for her. She always has these terrible allergies. I really do. <laughs> okay. I thought you said you were in LA. We are. No, we are. They oh, are. You're in New York. Oh, where in New York are you? Uh, Westchester County. Do you like mm -hmm. it? I love it. I love being close enough to the city, but I'm like, you know, like a very introverted person. So I like the quiet. That's why I love LA because it's so spread out. Yeah. Walk on the sidewalk and like no one bothers you. <laughs> <laughs> In the city, it's just that fast pace. You, know, that you walk through New York, and like five people have touched you. Oh. you know, you're like, I'm armpit height. So I'm just like holding my breath. Like, <laughs> oh no. Are you guys glad to be out of New York? Yeah. 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 I, I honestly, once we left, I was like, why does anyone live there? It's so cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's no, so cold. It's terrible. I have to wake up like an hour earlier to shovel my car out. I have to go get a step stool because I can't reach the top of the car to clean off the top. I was like, why did I live here? Where did you live? I lived uh, in East Harlem. I lived in Brooklyn. I lived in Wappingers Falls. Uh, wow. Long Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All throughout. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God bless you, Shruti. Thank you. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, well, oh. Just, we just sold our house in LA and my husband wants to move to New York and I'm like, I don't want to go back there. I don't blame you. No. Where did you guys live? Did you guys live in like the middle of Manhattan or did you live in Brooklyn? No, no. We lived in LA. We sold the LA, LA house and okay. where he wants to move back to New York. Oh, and I never lived there with, I was at NYU when I was uh, young. Yeah. And he was just, he grew up in New York. Mm. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Manhattan. Manhattan. Yeah. yeah. Manhattan is crowded now. I don't know so much now with that, with uh, COVID, but it's different than it was. <laughs> yeah, I, right. I, I would go to school because uh, I, I went to like a special dance academy when I was younger and I would get on the subway at like 10 and go myself with all these other little dancer girls and we like, you know, travel. You can't do that now. <laughs> Why? Oh, because of COVID. Internet. <laughs> like it's yeah. a completely different space now. Very yeah. different. Damn, I agree with you. So that's where we are. We're in the middle of trying to figure out where in the world, literally, where in the world are we gonna move? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're like transitioning from, cause Vancouver is where the show films, right? Yeah. Mm. so then what you don't want to move back to LA is that what you say you don't want to move there I heard Colorado's no. nice have you mm -hmm. whereabouts I'm not really sure one of my friends moved there and they're really enjoying it but then they also do like snow sports oh <laughs> I, I've never done any snow sport in my life but like uh skis and things like that I'm assuming I don't know <laughs> But yeah, they're they're loving it. They said the view's beautiful. There's weed oh, wow. and snow sports. So I was like, all right, snow Good sports. What more could snow you want? Sports. Snow sports. Mm -hmm. That's adorable. Where are you guys living in LA? We are in, in Valley Village, uh, North Hollywood. Yeah. Oh yeah, Valley Village. Okay. Where did you live in LA when you were there, Sheila? I lived in Hancock Park. No, you know where Larchmont is? Oh, is that more near? Is that near Santa Monica or? No, no, no. It's at Windsor Square. Do you know? Okay, Windsor Square. You, okay, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah there. If you looked at the Hollywood sign and you went to the third O and then went down about that's where it is. four miles, yeah, that's where it is. The shadow oh. of the O. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Please write that down. That was really good. <laughs> That's a movie right there. And are you guys writers? Kelly wants to live. Are you guys writers or are you actors or Shruti? Uh, yeah, yeah. I write and develop, um, and then I I try and do acting whenever possible. <laughs> yeah. I, I slacked on my writing. I have to get back into it. <laughs> You're a writer, okay? Yeah, I'm a creator too. We all we all have our own production company where we create content, so mm -hmm. it's fun. It's like a, you know, like the same wavelength of thinking. It just flows really nicely. And Naomi's yeah. brilliant writer. Victoria is too. Just like dream team. So yeah. you guys, have you produced together? Uh, we are just starting now. Um, so we have we have two projects that are in development deals and shopping agreements mm -hmm. with some production companies and. Uh, we have another couple pitches coming up. So hopefully, yeah, we're, we're looking to sell an original concept soon. <laughs> Amazing, knock on wood, knock on wood, that's great. Thank you. And I saw in the diner, was that yours? So I was, um, uh, that was like a short film I did. One of my friends was producing it and he told me about the storyline. I was like, oh, I love to be involved in it. It was really, I mean, it's a thriller, but it is also like a very real story, you know, about people doing shootings and all of that. So it was a sensitive subject, yeah. but, and then like also like doing the research for that role. It's nice to like delve deep into a role like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what are you working on? Are you working on any producing right now or, you know, working on your own material? I am producing, but it's for S Factor. I'm producing workshops and classes and possibly um, a retreat by the end of the year. It's, Ooh, that so I'm really in into building. I, S Factor has been around for 20 years and what it has been, the, mo the, the business model I'm changing up the business model given our opportunity with COVID. Mm -hmm. So the business yeah. model is no longer brick and mortar studios, mm -hmm. no longer having company owned studios, but um, licensing or certifying just teachers everywhere, doing everything virtually online. Um, I did a TED talk as well, which was in 2012, you wanna look oh. that up. And so doing more speaking, doing more engagements, really, really getting the message out to women that the most important thing you can do in this lifetime is reclaim your body. You do it, yeah. for, your, do it for your daughters if you're not gonna do it for yourself. Do it for your grandchildren, mm -hmm. do it. And, and it, reclaim your erotic body mm -hmm. because our culture, our patriarchy wants to own it. Mm -hmm. I know, it's so true. And it's it so true. We're and doing a uh, project now about the like based in Saudi Arabia and uh, yeah yeah it's, it's a it's amazing how controlling people want to be over women in particular oh. and, and what they do and what they wear and something as simple as wearing red lipstick like it's crazy right it's, crazy. it's so fucked up it is so fucked up it is so messed up yeah I'm writing the script right now and it's like <laughs> the research I'm like oh my god this is terrible yeah. who'd want to live here but it's what, yeah, are you, uh, what are you what are you using to research? Uh, mainly the internet, but we uh, we have a lot of um, interviews from uh, journalists and um, educators and women who are actually in Jordan or Saudi Arabia yeah. or from those places. So we have a lot of like uh, audio tracks, and then you know I Google as I go to. Wow, that must be a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's yeah. Oh, uh, good luck with that. Thank you. <laughs> so I think we have a few like couple fun questions to wrap it up if that's okay with you yeah. I'd love to ask you sure Naomi why don't you kick it off oh yes yes okay most likely to be voted as what in your yearbook succeed mm. yes <laughs> Victoria I wasn't I wasn't but I should have been <laughs> like that's the one I wanted <laughs> uh what's something people wouldn't expect to know about you uh that I love shooting guns Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. I know. can you like <laughs> assemble and disassemble really fast no god no I just like to hire the people they put it in my hand and I point it and shoot it and it feels good <laughs> but it 
but I don't like guns. I just, I was fat. I was blown away that I liked to shoot guns. Cause I don't, mm. I'm not a huge gun fan mm. and I don't like killing things. And yeah. so um, I was shocked that I liked it. So uh-huh. I surprised myself. There you go. <laughs> There's a power to it that I get. I'm, I'm like, oh, I get this. It's, mm. yeah. So to close it off, I mean, this is a, probably a question you've heard before. What have you never done before? So finish this sentence. Never have I ever, what have you never done before? Never have I ever jumped out of an airplane, nor will I. Mm, I agree. <laughs> Good nor <laughs> bungee jump. Pretty scary. I just think it's stupid. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. They were like, I knew as soon as the wind blew the wrong way that I, when I landed, I was going to break both my legs. And I was did like, you go in, did you do it? No. <laughs> I was like, you knew that was a possibility? You were trying to get me to jump out of a plane? Oh. It's like, what is wrong with you? I don't understand people that want to do things that trust. See, I, maybe it's because my trust in humanity is a little uh, wobbly right now. But like, oh, you want me to go 30,000, 25,000 feet up, strap on a little packet, and then jump out. <laughs> so you want me to kill myself? <laughs> or, or the other one. That's, that's you want to stand. Like, you huh? know, it's not even human error. That's all chance. Like, you know, yeah. The wind, yeah. The wind could be wrong. Something could no. happen. Like, you know. Oh, my God, it's so dumb. <laughs> anyway, I feel the same way about bungee jumping, though, too. It's like, you know, let's, <laughs> let's strap a piece of elastic around my tiny, itty bitty little leg and then let me jump off and pull my fucking hip out and <laughs> leave my leg up there and I'm in the river. No. Uh, I always think they're going to go too far and like hit their head on the ground. <laughs> Yes. I'm um, like, you're like an inch from the ground. Just a little I'm further gonna... your head cracks like an egg. Trust. It's trust issues. You know what, Naomi? We have trust issues, you and I. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I don't trust anybody anymore. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God. No. Mm-mm. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. That was so much fun. It went by so fast, too. It was super fun. Yeah. It was amazing. This is so great. Thank you so much, Sheila. Thank you. Thank you. You should start a podcast. What? What? Aren't there a gazillion? I can't. What did you say? I'm sorry. You guys, I'm I'm talked over you. I didn't mean to. What'd you say? I said you should start a podcast. Why? About what? About all of, like, you know, about, like, embodying, like, empowering yourself. You would be so, like, I mean, I would listen to it all the time. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. I'll think about it. But I thought there's, like, even a- if it's just, like, motivational. Because people, yeah. like, need to hear that stuff. Like, you yeah. know, lean in and stuff. Yeah. Just yeah. don't put it on, you know, and hear something positive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll do that in my 25th hour of my day. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, no Thank time. You. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, <laughs> Beth. Thank you Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> all right ladies it's been a pleasure thank you bye, bye. have a great bye. week stay safe stay healthy you too